Hello, my friends. A very good morning, and may God bless you all in the name of Jesus. May God be with all those who are participating of this broadcast and want, obviously, to know the truth that sets free, the truth that brings to existence the presence of God. It brings God's light. When a person knows the truth, then they for sure adhere to the truth. Whoever does not adhere the truth, does not accept the truth, then they despise the word of God. And they will follow their way. Well, yesterday we spoke about the words of the Lord Jesus concerning the unclean spirit, that when he goes out of a man, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, and he goes out of a man, when he's cast out, he's cast out, he's expelled with authority of the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he goes out of a man, the person, the human being, has their house then clean, swept, and put in order, which means that they feel at peace, they feel well, they feel in an extraordinarily healthy emotional state. Why? Because the devil, the demon, left their body. However, if they remain like this, with an empty body swept and put in order, then that unclean spirit which was there, since he walks around through different places looking for rest, and he didn't find, you see, demons only find rest when they find a body when they find a human body. So, it went out and didn't find rest. So, what did he do? He got seven other unclean spirits worse than himself, worse than himself, and he returns and enters the house he had left which means that the person that was once well is now filled with unclean spirits, eight of them. So, why, why did these spirits have access to that body that had been set free, that were delivered by the name of Jesus? Because the body was empty from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wasn't there. And it's the Holy Spirit that keeps our body. The one who keeps my body is the Holy Spirit. He keeps me. He's wonderful. He protects. Obviously, that His presence inhibits any investment or attempt of the devil against my body and my being. As it is written that those who are of God, the devil cannot touch them. He only touches with God's permission, as it was with Job. God permitted that the devil touched Job. Well, what I would like you to know, though, is that in the lack of the Holy Spirit, the body is empty, swept, and put in order. It's when the person was healed from incurable diseases, was delivered from addictions, from drugs. They were free from sin in a messy life. But they don't have, they don't have the Holy Spirit. So their body is not sealed as they say. 
the body is not sealed, so the body is open. And an open body is obviously susceptible to the entry of unclean spirits. And that's what happened. And the state of that man became worse, infinitely worse than the original state. So, my friend, you can notice that when a person has a demon, they have one problem, a serious problem. But when they have two demons, they have twice as much of that serious problem. If they have eight demons, you can only imagine the magnitude of the problem that person has. All because they lack the Holy Spirit. So you may ask, Bishop, tell me something. Why does God allow that demons will enter a person's body? God, my dear friend, already did what needed to be done in order to save our souls. He's already done it. But the person who does not believe in him, who resists, who is being resisting and rejecting him, that person is obviously ready to receive unclean spirits because they resist God's mercy. They resist God's grace. God offers salvation freely. Deliverance is free. The Holy Spirit is free of charge. He gives it all freely. All His goodness, all of His mercy and love, His forgiveness, it's all free. But still, people prefer sin. People do not want to receive the Holy Spirit in deed and in truth. There are those who seek the Holy Spirit, but they don't receive Him. And why don't they receive? Because many times the person does not want to let go of their personal projects, of their dreams. That's the reality. I say this because I was in a situation like this once. When I was a, a youth, I also wanted salvation. I wanted to be saved, but I didn't want to let go of my dreams, my personal dreams and projects. So I was in church for two years and was lost. I had knowledge of the truth, but I didn't want to adhere to the truth a hundred percent. I wanted part of the truth because I wanted to continue in my lies with part of my lies. And that's what happens to many people. They say, oh, I wanted to go to church, I wanted to come back, but in reality they don't, because if they really wanted, they would have come back already, because they have legs to walk to a club, to go celebrate carnival, to go anywhere in the world, to go shopping. They have legs to walk everywhere, except the church. How come? Why? How come a person has no legs to walk to church to seek the Holy Spirit? Why? Because in reality, they do not want. Deep down, they are divided. They do not want to let go of their desires. See what Jesus says. He says like this. When He has come, the Holy Spirit comes, He will convince the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. And he adds more, saying, we will convince the world of sin because they do not believe in me. But how? I believe in Jesus, Bishop. I believe, I read the Bible. I pray, I go to church. I don't go regularly, but I go. Sometimes I go. I'm always there when there is Lord's Supper. But I have my life. I have things to do, I have things to look after, as if God, as if God was a servant and that person was a master or a Lord, as if God needed them, as if God needed us. That's the reality.
So they think like this, okay, I'm gonna go to church, but I, I don't know, I'm thinking to go that day or that other day. So they are like making light of God's compassion. They are making light of the Holy Spirit. Because if, if indeed, they were in love, let's say, with a man or with a woman, indeed, and they wanted to be with that person, they would leave mother, father, the husband. How many women leave their husband to run away with another man? How many men leave their respective wives with, with their children to run away with another woman? Isn't it what people do? Haven't you seen this? People nowadays, they give everything. They put all of their strength, all of their strength into something they want to achieve. So why don't they put all of their strength to receive the Holy Spirit as well? Come on. Because in reality, they do not want to let go of the wrong life, the improper life, the irregular life. They live. They don't want to let go. They enjoy it. They like the dirt. They enjoy sin. Come on. When a person has any sort of pleasure in sin or they enjoy sinning, then this person is shielding themselves or their body, their heart against faith, against the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit, against God. They shield themselves because they enjoy that. And God respects our tastes. God respects our will. You have your will. And He's not going to impose. He's not going to force you to follow Him. Not at all. So God, through the Holy Spirit, convinces a person from sin. But deep down in their soul, they say, no, not now. Later on, when I'm older, when I get to bishop's age, I will give my life to Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry to say like this, but it's even funny. There are people, there are people who are like this. They want to leave it for later. They don't see the urgency to receive the Holy Spirit. But when the problems come, the wars, when the pandemic comes, when the earthquakes, the sea quakes, when the rain descends, when the catastrophes take place, where a lot of people die, a lot of people lose their life, then people are, they wake up, they get shocked, they are very fearful. And then, those who are alive, those who survived, some of them, they think, okay, let me run to God's arm and, and seek my salvation. Because I, I don't know what's going to happen later on. I may be asleep now and, and something happens, an earthquake happens and I don't wake up anymore. So many people... They only understand the language of pain. My apology to say this, but the language of punishment, of curse. Did you know, just for you to add this there to your mind, did you know that every time that the people of God, the Israelites, God's chosen people in the past, whenever they would turn against God, when they would please the gods of wood and, and stone and metal, when, when they would accept the sin of the people that they had defeated in battle, now they, God sends the people whom they had defeated in battle against them, and they would devastate the land. So God uses of everything bad that happens in the world to draw the world's attention, to draw people's attention to Him, to say, listen, here I am. 
If you seek me, if you want me, I'm ready to answer you. Come to me and I will give you rest. But if the person does not want to let go of sin, if they do not want to let go of sin, sin is, is the root of all evil. Sin is what leads people to eternal death and eternal punishment and condemnation. So the Holy Spirit, when He comes, Jesus said, He will convict the world of sin. And He's been convicting people from sin. He is convicting, convincing people from their sins. You who are right now watching us, you live perhaps even inside of a church. You like it. You go there. But you have your moments of sin. You live a double life. That's how it happens with the lovers. Did you know? Did you know that? What is a lover? A lover is that person who doesn't have responsibilities. He goes there, visits the house of the, the wife or of the lover. They go there, later on they go back home to, to their family. The person does not want to abandon the family, but also they don't want to let go of the lover. So they, the person wants to live in this, in this double lifestyle. And that's what human beings are doing with God. That's what human beings have been doing. They turn God into their lover. They only go to Him when they have a stomachache. When they have a stomachache, they run to Him. Oh, come on, my friend. Do you think that God will subject Himself to this situation? Do you think God needs us? You, me? No, not at all. He doesn't need anything. He's God. With or without me, He exists and He will always be God. Great and powerful and glorious and magnificent. So, Open your mind. Think a little bit, just a little bit. It will not burn your neurons. Just think a little bit. Whenever, every time that Israel would turn their back on God, God would send enemies. He would send plagues. He would send the famine. In the times of Elijah, there was a huge famine. God sent that, that famine. They lacked water. God sent that need. What for? In order for those people who are hard-headed and proud would return to their first love. So the problem that you are going through right now, I'm sure that God is trying to draw your attention. He's knocking on your door, the doors of your heart, saying, Here I am. In order for you, of course, if you think, you can open the door, answer Him, and give yourself to Him so He can dwell within you. My friend, God does not share space with anybody. It's His space and His only. Your body, my body, our body was created to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, to be sanctuary of the Most High. And if we share this body with the devil, do you think that God will, will submit himself to such situation? Think well. Evaluate your life. He, the Holy Spirit, convinces, and He's convincing you. However, it's so good to live outside, isn't it? The lover, it's, it's nice, isn't it? So the person is divided. Once divided, they are in doubt. And once in doubt, there is no faith to be delivered and saved. They go to church. The pastor casts the demons out. The following day, the person is there again manifested. Why won't the devil leave? Because the person doesn't want. The person doesn't want. The person wants the benefits, but they do not want the commitments and, and the obligations. 
And then it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Do you think that faith in God is a religion, is a life of, of religion? Of being in and out of the church? No, life with God is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And in the leap year, 366 days a year. There is no other way. It's 24 hours a day. We live faith. It's like we said yesterday, the Spirit of God is like the oxygen. Without Him, human beings cannot live. But when we have Him, then there is protection. There is ears to hear our cry out, our supplications. So learn this, learn this. You, you, have to do a self-analysis of what your life is and has been like. And if it is, or if the balance of your life is negative, it's because God allowed that to be this way for you to return to Him. He's knocking on your door. So all this destruction that lays waste at noonday, at midday, all over the world, all this destruction, and the worst things are coming. God allows it. God allows it in order to shake us up so that we can then turn to Him and say, God, have mercy on me, and we return to Him with all of our strength, all of our heart, with our feelings, with our soul, with wisdom and intelligence, with everything, everything. So evaluate your life. Because if you do not resolve your inner problem, then your external problem will continue to be bad and nobody will be able to resolve it. The inner problem is your soul. Deliver your soul or seek to deliver yourself from the evil in your inner being. Let go of this life of mistakes, of sins that you are living in. Fix your life, your soul with God and everything else will be added unto you. But first, you have to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. A, a, a righteous life, a correct life, a life that is regular and pleasing to God according to His word. Tomorrow, we are going to speak more about this. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.